success after lockdown will highlight, like I said, the men and women that's formerly incarcerated. And it actually dispels that recidivism rate that we feel from it being so high that it actually smothers and overlooks those men and women that's home and that's that's successful in their own right right now. And so with that said, I, I would like to uh, uh, introduce you to my partner, Anthony Colon. What's going on everybody, you already know. My name is Anthony Colon, here from Bronx, New York. Why don't you just introduce yourself, my brother, and let them Peace, know Peace, yo. Absolutely. Um, my yeah. name is Chi Ali Griffith. Come on, let's get that. Yeah, my name is Chi Ali, um, Chi Ali Griffith, um, mm -hmm. I guess professionally known as Chi Ali. I used to rap with the native tongue, De La and Tribe Called Quest and, you know, Moni and Latifah, mm -hmm. all of them back in the days, early 90s. Um, moving forward, um, as I grew into manhood, as a young, young, when I first left my teens, in my early 20s, as a youngster, um, I committed a homicide. I later ran after I committed the homicide. I was never under arrest, but I ran, and then I was featured on America's Most Wanted, and I was captured in March of 2000, 2001, I think. And um, I did three years on Rikers Island and ended up um, copping out to 14 flat for manslaughter. And, you know, during my prison stint, I was with a lot of these brothers <laughs> and, and more positive brothers. I mean, it was definitely a lot of negative brothers, but it was some positive ones, and those are the ones we trying to focus on and dwell on and trying to trying to be. Um, but yeah, like at some point during my 14 year stint in prison, I think big shouts to my man Anthony Sims um, when I was in Elmira. Just that I, f I feel like in around 0506 when I was in Elmira, that really was my like kind of transformation period where I guess. I don't know if it's just something snapped or you get it or for me I think it's you know I just you know I'm going from you know old boyhood to young manhood yeah. you know what I mean for me I think it was more that growth and development and um, yes. you know it just started off on a, on a whim but my man Ant who's still he's still locked up and, and serving 25 years but I mean real positive real positive brother and he just he just gave me a positive path in prison to walk that wasn't whack, that wasn't corny, that wasn't, you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, and I I feel like I'm still indebted to him for that. And I, I want to say thanks, thank you to him for that. Um, but, you know, under Ant's tutelage, I kind of got my life together. Then later, I, when I first got to Sing Sing, um, it was like, I think the day I got to Sing Sing, Mike, who was with me? I think me and Mike was in Clinton together. I don't know where the hell we was at. We were somewhere together. Yeah. But the first thing Mike said to me when he seen me, like the first night I was there, was like, "Yo, you know they got the college program. You fucking with it?" I was like, "I don't know. You could get me in." He was like, "Yeah, I could probably get you in." I was like, "Then I'm gonna fuck yeah. with it." Like, you know, it was more or less just I was here. That was the first person I seen. I knew, and I wasn't doing nothing. Absolutely. And for me, I think with the whole college program in prison. That's the main thing that, that leaves me baffled a lot is none of us is really doing nothing when we're in there. Mm. You know what I mean? So I don't get how you wouldn't at least try to capitalize on that, especially when so many of us always talk about, you know, getting back at the man, giving it back to them and all that. Mm -hmm. It's like, yo, that's something that we could capture for free that they can never take back. Yeah. That's something that they pay for in the free, free, free cycle, That's you right. feel me? So it's like, that was something that I was glad that I just stepped on and got to it before any of the other, you know, bullshit came into play yeah. to even into my mind. And so it was like, I was kind of focused the time I got to Sing Sing. And it was like... And I didn't miss out on nothing. You know, you know That's me. Right. I still smoked my weed That's when right. I wanted to. I still played poker. I still, you know, yeah. worked out. I didn't miss nothing but the first hour of the yard. That's right. So that was my this is my question to you, because I remember we was in uh Clinton Annex together and I left and went to Sing Sing and, and you came right after. 
And when you came, you know, um, you got involved with the college program. And that was, I seen that transition and going within yourself. We used to go to NOI yeah. together. Big you know what I'm saying? Big shout to Miss Muhammad. Miss Muhammad. She I was her soul. That's why I'm with you. She oh, passed rest away. In peace, man. You know, but she definitely that helped a cool. lot of brothers like you and I. <laughs> you know what I mean? Stern. And the pro Stern. No question. Yeah. But necessary at times, you know? Absolutely. But um, my question is, um, like, I want to know, when you did get into the college uh, program, like, how did that shape and mold you, you know, to the person that you are today? Did, what did it do for you, like, I in think, terms of your growth? I mean, of course, you know, the prestige of being able to say you have a degree. But even more so that college for me, basically, was about teaching me to get through the process. It's like in life, especially with young black men, we don't have the patience to get through the process. It's like if you can't see going to college and medical school and you know study and work till we 28 so we could get paid for the rest of our life. Yeah. We want the instant gratification right yeah, now. We need yeah. that now. So for me, a lot of college was just the process. Cause, and, then, and then as well as I learned a lot in the process, it's like certain places, like when we took uh, Judaism, Christianity, and um, mm -hmm. Islam. It's like going in, it's like, man, I'm not Jewish. I'm never yeah. going to, you know what I mean? <laughs> so that was a motherfucker attitude going in. So from that standpoint, I looked at it as, well, it's a process. Get through it. And I worked to get through it. But years later, I'm on the train one day just talking. And there's a white guy next to me. And he happened to be Jewish. And he said something. And I was like, yeah. And I made reference to something that I learned in class. And he was like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. And I was like, yeah, I used to be Jewish and shit. And, you know, we both was laughing and shit. But it was just, you never know when something, the simplest thing you learn, you might be able to bring that to the forefront. And you don't know how that can help you. Or, you know what I mean? It, it's like, it's just opportunities happen at the weirdest times and in the weirdest ways and you never know how and which way you're going to connect with someone and in which way they're going to be a part of your life in the future. It's like everybody you meet is a reason. You, you know what I mean? You bonded with thousands of motherfuckers in jail, but it was a reason me and you had a certain bond. You know what I mean? Sorry. And that might be why I'm here today. You feel me? So, you know, for the most part, just learning how to get through the process that is going to be lots of things in life that we're not going to see why we need it. We're not going to see why we got to go through it and it's going to seem like a waste of time. But just having the, the resilience to stick with it and get through it because you see the bigger picture. And even if you don't never use it, it's something you got under the cap. Do you like when I introduce the guy next to you to the left? Green. Also known <laughs> as Green Eyes. Yes, um, so, uh, why don't you introduce him to us? Well, this is my brother, my brother Green Eyes, Sean Kyler, but you know, we we call him Green Eyes, as you can see why. Um, beautiful brother, one of the one of one of the brothers in prison that you would be like, what the fuck is he doing here? <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? Like I didn't so never what? ask him or got into his case or his situation, nah. but I knew he wasn't one of the people that really was supposed to be there. Not that anyone's supposed to be there, but some of our actions really dictated. And once we there, can our actions continue to show why we there or why we might have needed a timeout. But Green Eyes was one of them brothers that never exemplified. None of those qualities ever flourished with him. Um, but just beautiful brother, I mean, we bonded more when we was in the college program because we was in the same block and I think we was on the same gallery. So. You know, it was just camaraderie from college and, you know, just being locked up a long time. But, you know, it's always been a pleasure. My brother. Nice. Nice. Yeah, so um, as she said, you know, my name is Sean Kyle. I'm um, Green Eyes known in the pen. Um, known for a couple of things. Basketball and okay. school. Okay. Um, and the third thing, which is I think more important than both of those, is low library. Oh, like I up. spent oh, there you go. almost ninety-eight percent of my time in prison um, in a low library. Um, the reason for that is because I went to prison for a crime I didn't commit, mm. and the change for me 
happened on my second day in the tools. Um, Muslim brother was like, listen, brother, I don't know you. I'm not trying to get to know you. Hmm. But there's something wrong, and you need to go to the law library. I don't know what it is, but you need to go to the law library. Oh. And from that day forward, 24 hours after that, I was in the law library, and I've been on that fight ever since. Um, I did 24 and a half years. I went to the parole board um, in 2019. I'm one of the very few people that claimed innocence at the parole board with a homicide uh, and still got out of prison um, on the first go round. Mm. Um, and actually early with uh, the limited credit time allowance. Congratulations. So, yes. Um, And I think back to that period of time, you know, in my life, for me, I remember when I was found guilty and I remember when I got sentenced. And I remember saying to myself that I'm not going to stop living. Uh, and that's how I did my incarceration. Like, I, I, I never allowed prison to turn my heart gray. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I treated people like people, mm. irrespective of what your conviction is. I need to know the person. Like, Chi and I, we ate out the same pot. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We ate out the same pot. We stirred the same pot. Mm -hmm. And when he left, I had that pot for years. Mm -hmm. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. um, if I can, if I can say one thing about my time in, in college, and I have to plug that, of course, I graduated valedictorian. That's oh, right. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Four point oh. <laughs> but I didn't do that on my own. Like it's a, it's a, it's an honor. Yeah. that's bestowed on an individual. But every time I spoke to one of my classmates about something, that reinforced the lesson for me that made me do better mm -hmm. and bring them along as well. Um, I believe so much in the transformative power of education that I became the clerk for the program. Um, it was a long time clerk for the high school program. And um, I even taught in the program um, for people who didn't have the college credits to get in school. We created, uh, um, uh, it escapes me at this moment, a um, mentorship program. Actually, pre college. Pre college program. And Miss Muhammad, may she, you know, rest. I was her clerk when she passed away. Um, what year was that? If you want. Two thousand thirteen, maybe thirteen fourteen. We didn't hear from her. No one heard. No one knew what happened. And like it was a part of me missing. Mm -hmm. Like this is the woman that brought me along in the college program, saw something in me as I helped people that she wanted me to be her clerk. Like that's a privilege to be Ms. Muhammad's clerk. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, and to grow to love this woman knowing that she had my best interest, not only mine, but everyone that came through the college door. Mm -hmm. And she had our best interest at heart. And she took no shit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, to be 100 she took no shit. Person. You know. Um, and that college experience, for me, was really about me being me. 
because I was in a privileged position to help others discover them. Nice. You know? Absolutely. Um, and be a support. However that is. Some people will tell you, listen, he was an asshole. Right. I'm going to tell you that. Some people, if you ask me. Thank you. But later on, people understood how serious I was about the integrity of the program. One. Just like me and she, like, we, we started in Clinton, man. <laughs> that's where we started together, you know, and uh, that's right. He was the basketball king. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> towered over everybody. And we were young at this time, you know. So um, um, when we did transition to Sing Sing and we got into college together, we got into different various organizations together, you know, um, we, we were a part of creating programs and facilitating together. And, uh, you know, to see you now out here, you know, in the community and giving back, I want to know, like, what part of that inside, organizations, college, inspired you to actually do what you're doing now? And talk, about, talk a little bit about what you're doing now. You know, because I think it connects so much with where we came from inside, you know, prison, those behind those walls. Absolutely. So my official title at Vera is I'm the operations manager uh, for advocacy and partnerships, um, the, department. the department itself, um, which is basically serves as a tool for the work that we do across the nation um, on immigration, on criminal justice reform, on um, confinement conditions, uh, our work with Pell, you know, we use advocacy tools to win. Um, and a large part of my job is I'm a thought partner across the org on every issue that we work on. Mm -hmm. um, having the extensive background that I do have and closeness to the criminal justice system, having argued in every court uh, from the trial court to the Supreme Court, um, I have a keen understanding of the law, um, which I hone behind the wall. Um, so, again, I'm a thought partner, but more to your connection question, and I tell everyone this, the greatest thing that I learned while I was incarceration, while I was incarcerated, was the power of networking. Because when we were in school, there was no Pell, there was no TAP. Um, we had to fundraise for every dollar. Mm -hmm. And we sat in chairs as someone raised money for us to sit in. So it was only incumbent upon us to raise money for the people that were sitting in those chairs after we left. Um, and having that experience gave me the confidence to talk to billionaires, millionaires, and understand that, yeah, you have money, but I have experience. Mm -hmm. I'm confident in what I do. I'm confident in where I've been, where I'm going. And that experience, those experiences, um, my voice is in, I don't know, 35 countries talking about the transforming power education. Wow. Um, so Say that again real quick, what you just said. The Good, please, say, say it again. <laughs> like, my voice is in like 35 countries absolutely. talking about the transformative power of education. Wow, absolutely. Um, my valedictory speech has been heard around the world. Like, I've wow. gotten emails from people like, are you the person who... Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. This piece spoke to me. Mm -hmm. You know, um... But it's that ability to network, to learn to network. I got 
into this job that I have now because of my confidence in networking. Um, I have to shout out Lawrence Bartley. No question. Yeah, yeah. We couldn't um, be here today. He was well, supposed to be here today. Yeah. But the story behind me getting this role and getting this opportunity was I was in parole on a Tuesday and we have a group where we post you know what we're doing and he was posting that he was doing a um, a piece at John Jay for the Small on Crime Conference um, and I'm on 40th Street John Jay's on 59th Street mm -hmm. I come out of parole I'm like listen can you get me in he's like listen I can't get you in. However, the list is kind of jacked up. They didn't have me on the list, and I'm a presenter. Say no more. So I walk in John Jay and act like I'm supposed to be on the list. <laughs> <laughs> they allow me in. You know, when I get in there, um, Nick's uh, presentation is finished. Lawrence is about to go on. So after the presentation, I'm talking to Lawrence and his boss, and we're talking about a job opportunity at the Ford Foundation, and Nick walks up. Nick Turner being the uh, president of E.D. Um, Dairy Institute. And he talks to Lawrence, and Lawrence introduced me to him. Automatically, automatically for me, elevator pitch. Because I'm conditioned this way yes, right. from yeah. all of my experience in raising and fundraising and raising money, Absolutely. I automatically give him the elevator pitch. Mm. He's like, "Listen, let me take your name." He pulls out the pad, he puts it in the pad. So I'm from prison. I've seen superintendents do this all the time. Okay, yeah, he's not gonna get back to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Twenty-four hours later, he didn't get back to me. But persistence. I emailed him. Hey. He said you was going to get back to me. I don't know if this is ethical because you, you know, you're the ED. I'm asking for a job. He's like, this is absolutely ethical. Yeah. You know, it's amazing that you say that because, you know, they say they say if you want to be successful and you want something that, uh, to happen, you want to really network, you better have your 30-second pitch ready for that elevator. You yet never know who you're going to run into in the elevator anywhere. Absolutely. And it's going to probably take about 10 to 30 seconds. You need to tell them a pitch on what you're going to do, what you can do, how you're going to do it, and make them believe and convince them of doing that. You know, I think it's just amazing how you brothers, you know, coming from different backgrounds and met in the prison system and decided to st instead of saying, let me become, you know, part of the wild bunch and just wild out because I got to do X amount of time in, in, in jail and I want to live, live up to that street credibility to take an, uh, an opportunity and advantage of the program that was presented to you guys there, you know what I mean, to go to school, to get an education, to elevate your mind and not only yet yeah, do it the past time but to actually take that, come home and actually apply it to something, not just let it go to waste, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that's the most key thing about what we're talking about here when we talk about success after lockdown, right? Is re-entry starting the minute you go into prison, right? Not wait to say, I got 15 years, let me wild out for 10, get a reputation of being not the one, right? And then wait for the last five years and then say, okay, I'm gonna try to make some changes now. And then wonder why you keep getting hit at the board and then you come home, you be resentful or mad and angry and you come back and go right back to square one. You don't Absolutely. utilize what you have learned, right? You don't believe and reach your full potential to come out and make the change. So we here, so we here with success after lockdown to actually grab, you know, those at-risk youth. You know, um, in my time of incarceration, I got it real early, and I took that thorough introspection. I closed that gate. You know, the first two years. I closed that gate. I worked in the law library for 13 years, right beside you. Uh, you know what I mean, Mr. Kyla? You know, yeah, yeah, I call him Mr. Kyla now, you know. You know, this, uh, you know Mr. Griffin, Mr. Kyla, Mr. Barley, we, you know, because we went from boys to men, you know, and we, we you know, we displayed that growth and development, you know, and I think that it, it all, you know, had to do with our will, you know, and our determination to want to do better. And so I definitely look forward to us, uh, you know, going to bigger and better and higher heights, man, in the near future. 
you know, so I'm definitely coming back for y'all, and I appreciate y'all time. Yeah, and just before we, I don't know if we're calling, but I feel like everybody want to do better. No like, question. at the end of the day, I don't go for where you come. We all know right from wrong. Some may do wrong for the right reason, whatever, whatever right. your situation is. But everybody want to do better. And it's like, once you're behind that wall, it's like, come on, you don't want to be nothing on top of nothing. You know, be something on top of nothing. You know what I'm saying? Dude, Absolutely. like, you just going to let the negative just... Wait this yeah, yeah. Come on, bro. And this is going back to the prison system. Yeah. Sorry, you, but this is going back into the prison system. So Bella, which is uh, Julio Medina's uh, assistant, she's gonna make sure that this footage here goes back into the prison system. And so you right. That's you know this is we who able to catch capture our our youth, our at risk youth, our young ones that's coming in the prison system and actually get them to, to change that mentality than us. They see us and they see where we came from and where we at today. And this is this is what uh what it's about. And I, and I think you hit it right on the point, right? Nobody grows up, nobody ever raised their hand on, on, on career day in school in the third grade and the teacher asks what do you want to be when you grow up and they say I want to be a convicted ex felon, I want to be a murderer, yeah, I want to be a junkie, I want to be a, a drug user. Nobody says that. Everybody has these dreams and aspirations, right? right? And as we transform in life and as we make, you know, um, bad choices, we either learn from them, right? And realize that you know, one thing somebody once always told me is, yo, listen, the streets, they never lose a fight, and they ain't never going to lose a fight, right? And so why do you keep trying to beat it for, you know what I mean? So other people's mentality like, well, I'll just join it. But when you join the streets, you lose yourself in that whole lifestyle, right? And yeah, we all want to get better. We all want to do better. We all want the great things in life, right? But a lot of us ain't willing to take the steps necessary to achieve it. A lot of people ain't ready to go and educate themselves and instead of going to the yard and working out and going to do all the stuff, right? They they, they, they don't want to go and say, you know what, yo, I'm going to program, you know what I'm saying? They want to go, yeah, I'm going to the yard. Yo, you got this, you got that, right? Educate yourself, you know? So before we end real quick, right up today, what advice would you give them? as far as trying to make music for the streets, live in the streets, and trying to be at peace and yet successful in your own right and doing something. I mean, it, it, I feel like it's hard because I feel like the music that I want them to push may not be the music that's going to bring them the success they want. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. everybody, you know, I'm an old school rapper, everybody would be like, yo, when you going to do something, we missed that, we missed that, or we went to real hip hop. and. Young boys talking about nothing and nothing. But at the end of the day, when old school motherfuckers put out projects, it's like if they don't move units, it, it, it's, it's no force behind it. It's nothing to go to majors with, like, yo, this needs to be heard too. Mm -hmm. So it's like even us, at the end of the day, we still, as listeners, want to hear the bullshit. We think we don't, yeah. but we do. It's like if you had a party, you didn't want to, you know what I mean? You want to hear some show you shake your ass on you. I mean, that's just human nature. So uh, oftentimes, we think we want that. So I would say for the artists coming up, be you. Make the music you want to make to get to where you have to get to. However, once you get to where you got to get to, then do your due diligence, man. And, you know, you're right. You're right. It's like, at some point, you got to do better. And like I said, get your money. Get secure. It's real life. I'm never going to tell nobody, you know, the first is the first. Right. And, like, I'm blessed. I want everybody to have that feeling of being blessed. And when you don't got to worry about how that rent is getting paid, that's just a beautiful feeling. Mm -hmm. So get where you need to get to. But once you get there, it's like... Don't overdo it with the greediness, with the jewelry and all everything. Like, yo, start giving back. Start flipping it. Start, you know, making the way. It's like, that's why I feel like I feel like some artists, once they really pop and do have a duty somewhat. Because it's like, yo, especially like, that's why I love Kanye. And he's so, you know, he's so loved and hated. But it's like, he came from hip hop. So I feel like he's a person that's popping in today's society but was also a hip hop backpack dude. I feel like he's a person that could like build that bridge from the two generations. So sometimes that's the only thing I get frustrated with him about sometimes. I feel like, yo, he could be the one to really make the youth kind of understand some more of the hip hop rap, 
you're not just you know just being an artist but being a real MC and shit like that mm-hmm. and they'll listen to him right. see that's what everybody's not gonna get listened to there's, but they're gonna listen to him there's no mentor there's no right, right. right. and it's yeah. like it's even with me once you get too positive they're not gonna listen to you okay. once you it's yeah. like sometimes it's cool to come looking with the suit but sometimes certain people they see the suit they I don't know, fuck that nigga. That nigga don't know. They just they, they don't they can't see nigga. Yeah, nah. The, the shorts is under the suit, nigga. Right. You want to get the basketball? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. what you right. want to do, son? Like, yeah. but people just get it misconstrued. So sometimes it's good to you know have the salt and the pepper. Oh, the salt and pepper. You know, maybe you the pepper. I'm the salt. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. You gotta have both. You gotta have a yeah. nice balance. So your your advice would be just stay true, man. Stay true to who you are. And- I mean, get to where you got to get to and then do right. Like I said, we all know right from wrong. You know what I mean? Whether you in the booth, make right in a rhyme. Like, you know if your moms, there's certain songs you would love for your moms or grandmother to hear. And there's certain songs you're going to be like, nah, fast forward with this one, mom. You know what I'm saying? So, you know. Same question to you, all right? <clears throat> what advice would you have uh, to the younger brothers out there today, right, that... Out in the street, incarcerated, or just coming out of uh, of incarceration. What advice do you have for them uh, moving forward so that way they don't have to be a statistical number with the recidivism rate to keep coming in and out of prison? What what advice would you give to them? Setbacks happen. And how you respond to those setbacks is to scale of your maturity. Like it's hard. Like I tell my story I'm fortunate. Like I'm fortunate. I'm sorry. I, things happen for me in ways that are not typical. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I didn't have the struggles that some people have. Maybe many. But I see those struggles because I'm surrounded by the people that I was surrounded by in prison. So I talk to them daily. And for anybody coming home, I have this theory that it's that first 30 days. You have to be able to have small successes in those first 30 days in order to prepare you for when you have that larger failure that you can say, hey, that was an isolated failure. Mm -hmm. But I accomplished all of these things and I can get over that Mm. for the next one. And then you get another success and you get another success. And as you put that in your bank, you start to build confidence Mm. to prepare you for whatever those failures are because there's going to be some. So anybody in any situation, whether you're going into the prison system, you just got there. Listen, I was in prison at 24 and a half years old. Never been incarcerated ever in my life. I had to learn on the fly. Mm -hmm. But I stayed true to who I am. Mm. Yeah. And everybody else was like, that's a good dude. Mm. That's a good dude. And I just let me be me. You know what I'm saying? And I I know a whole lot of people, man. And right. I dare say there's a lot of people in prison that love me. And I got mad love for them. And I work every day to, you know, try to make the system better. Because the brothers and the sisters that we left behind, like, they need a voice. I don't mind being that voice for them. Like, I sit in the boardroom with them. You know, I sit in high places. And I'm not bragging, I'm, and I'm not trying to toot, but I sit in high places. No. Like, the governor's office, and like, people that have power. Let's step I back can, for one second. I, I want you to toot your heart, to be honest mm-hmm. with you. Because you're taking a brother who's been wrongfully convicted and done 24 years sitting in a prison cell with a bunch of people that ran the streets that lived, that had to adapt to a certain concept of life to survive in prison. I know I spent 15 years in New York State prison, right? But to say 
Yeah, toot your horn because it shows people that there's possibility. Doesn't matter your background and where you came from or what you've done or where you've been at. You can, if you put your best foot forward, go ahead and get to the next level. You can sit with governors, with, with the president. You can sit. The sky's the limit. It is. It's how much work are you willing to put into believing in what you deserve in life. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, no, I just want to close these words with just expressing to both of y'all, you know, um, how motivational y'all were, you know, in my life, mm. in me and both of y'all, you know. Um, Likewise. When, when, listen, hey, man. Hey. When, we went, <laughs> when we came through that system, you know, together, and I'm talking about that uh, sink sink in particular, you know, because um, Clinton, you know, it was it was kind of dead up there, man. Let's, let's, let's keep it real, man. It was dead. It was dead up there. So when, when we flourished, and I watched, I watched both of y'all. I watched y'all my entire time that we were together, and I knew that we were gonna see each other on this side, and we we are gonna make big things happen. And y'all are a part of that, a part of my success in life, a part of your own, a part of others. And y'all gonna actually mold. We we gonna mold this, man, to uh, being able to give back to our community, man. That's that's my objective for this is to actually show us in this light now because we, we stereotype. You know, society see us as you know these guys as prisoners. They killed someone. You know what what are they doing? You know what, what they don't deserve anything. However, you know they they. They don't see, you know, that impact that we are causing to the community and society as a whole. So I want to thank both of you. Well, thank you. Today, thank man. both of y'all for having yeah. us. And yeah. so you know, you know, when you need Chi Ali, I'm here. No you question, know, man. I appreciate it. you. Yeah. Yeah. Just got to remind me. Don't you remind me. I'm here. And, 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 and I think that...